As I mentioned in part six, the match that we're going to talk about for part seven here is Nia Jax getting a shot at the women's championship that Bailey has right now. And this is as far as you can get from one side to another. These two don't match up at all, which means we're either going to get a squash match where Nia Jax is going to be really just, you know, she'll get a drop kick and stand there and wobble back and forth and whatever. And I'm going to be the sourpuss about this. I don't have high hopes for this match. Part of it's because Nia Jax has not been around long enough. Part of it's just because I don't buy into the idea that Bailey has a shot against her. And I think that she's going to win it. So if they book it in a certain way where they can get around it, maybe it's not going to be as bad. But what I don't want to see here is Bailey hitting these like elbows on Nia Jax where it looks like each one of them is like going to knock her out kind of a thing and stuff. Bailey's like a fourth, maybe a fifth of her size. It should be a two-second squash match, and if we don't get that, then it's going to be kind of kind of weird. And even if we do get it, I'm not going to enjoy it and all that. So, uh, Peyton, you're usually the most optimistic person here. I know you're a fan of Bailey. Can this be a good match? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Bailey's extremely talented. I mean, she has had two of the all-time greatest Divas matches in the history of the company. Uh, not to say she's just going to be able to go out there and have a great match with anybody, but it's not like Nia Jax is total dog shit. She's relatively good, especially for shit. a woman of her size. Yeah, <laughs> she's she's talented in her own right. She's still learning, and she has a lot to learn. I think it's almost a shame they put themselves into this position. I almost feel like doing anything other than her getting a dominant victory over Bailey would be a mistake mm-hmm. with the way they booked themselves into this. Um, they can still make an entertaining story out of that, though. You know, you can still have a, a long battle of Bailey fighting as the underdog, trying to win. Think Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn won. How amazing that match was! But that was basically a squash match. Think uh, Brock Lesnar and John Cena at SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. Squash match, but still a fun match. So it's possible, and. I, I think Bailey definitely has it in her, and Nia Jax, I haven't learned enough of, but she may. So let, let, let's be optimistic, and let's see what these women can pull out, because the the women have rarely let us down in NXT. So let, let, let's, let's check it out. I definitely have more faith that these two in NXT can put on a good match than if this was on the main roster, that's for sure. But you mentioned before about uh, the idea of booking it already and like kind of like jumping the gun a little bit with um, Nia Jax. I was thinking that we were going to get Eva Murray here. Were you kind of thinking the same thing before all those taping uh, results ended up being posted? Well, it unfolded on TV for me, but I wasn't sure that that was where they were going to go. But I know that she won the number one contendership or was handed it, however it happened. (laughs) Um, But I didn't think that's what they would do for London because I knew London would crap all over it. You had to have something that was going to have a little more buzz to it. And her against a highly instrumental opponent like Nia Jax, I, I think that's better. Do you agree I mean, about that? The real money Wigo? is in a matchup uh, uh, with Asuka. Hmm. Yeah, there you go, Wego. Now, is Nia Jax a good option, or should they just gonna should they have uh, just gone with Asuka? Hmm. My biggest issue with Nia Jax is she's green as goose shit. There's still a lot. She's still getting the fundamentals down. She shouldn't be wrestling for the title. Mm-hmm. She should be doing squash matches, getting used to working in a live crowd. I'm sure Bailey can get a decent match out of her, but or in one that's not going to like repulse me. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not too confident that this match is going to be any good. I think Asuka would have been a better idea, but again, they debuted these girls very close together, and they haven't had much time to. Uh grow on the roster. Maybe Emma was a better option to go with. So, Drew, have you watched Nia Jax's matches yet? Eh, no. Do you know anything about, like, uh, her? Th- yeah, like her, her in-ring performance or anything like that? Well, I know from what you guys said, I've seen highlights, and they weren't really much of highlights. So, uh, for the most part, it might suck, but at the end of the day, if Bailey picks up a win, I can't be too disappointed. Well, since I, I thought that you probably hadn't had seen it, because I know that you mentioned before that you haven't really been checking out NXT all that much, and she is pretty new. So, 
having not seen her wrestle and not really having that much of a predisposed idea about what her her range is and stuff like that, just looking at Bailey's size and Nia Jax's size, I mean, they used to sell matches back in the day of just, this guy's really big, don't you want to watch him wrestle? Is it something where Bailey versus somebody five times her uh, her size and weight, is that interesting enough on its own? I mean, it is. Bailey works best a lot of the times uh, working that underdog type of thing. Nia Jax is built right. You can easily do that right now with Bailey, even though she's the champion. So, I mean, they they pull that with Daniel Bryan a number of times being the underdog. Bailey can do the same. She chased the title. You know, they could easily drop the title off her and have her chase again. She's a very good chaser. So I'm going to pose this to anybody who wants to jump in. If Nia Jax loses no matter how she loses, whether it's Bailey getting a clean win or maybe she loses by like some kind of distraction or whatever the case may be. Does that hurt Nia Jax more and have to have her go back to the very beginning and build herself back up again? Or is she by default, just kind of this number one contender for her size? How about that? Well, there's the thing about wrestling is, how do you determine what the number one contender is anyway? There, there's no official rules for that. There's no standings. I mean, who's the number two contender? Who's the number three contender? None of that really matters. It's You can make the number one contender anyone you want at any time in any fashion that you want. Nia Jax was made the number one contender because she's a hot item right now and because, hey, she's doing big things. We have a champion. Let's put them against each other and let's make that a headline match. So that that's all that is. You don't think it'll hurt her too much if she loses? No. I mean, they, they did the same thing with Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews is still awesome. Yeah, they could easily pull the... Uh, she's not Maybe she's not ready to be a champion yet. She needs more work to do. You can easily do that with her. So let's go around here and say who we think is going to win this match: Drew, Bailey, or Nia Jax. I will go with Bailey, but I might have to go with either a DQ win or a win that just comes out of nowhere. I don't. I would. It, I will be interesting to see her do a belly belly to belly with her though. <laughs> Bailey to belly on Nia Jax. All right, if they can pull that off, that's going to be really impressive. Way go. Is it uh, title change or not? I think they're going to pull the trigger, unfortunately. Um, and I feel bad because they painted themselves into a corner. Like, what the fuck? Why would you put her this early for the title? Bailey hasn't had a chance to get a run, and she hasn't had a chance to get any momentum. This is actually one of the first times where I'm just like, the fuck, WWE? Why are you fucking NXT up? Hmm. Peyton, Bailey going to retain the title? Or is Gable going to come and just retain it for her? You know, it could really go either way. I, I'm pretty sure that it's going to go to Nia Jax just because why would you have her lose in any fashion? Other than there, there is a, a variable to this, and that is Eva Marie has been hanging by the side of Nia Jax. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand that relationship. So maybe she can have an influence on this somehow causing Nia Jax to lose or at least get disqualified to where she doesn't get the title. Yep. That's exactly what I'm going with here. I think that Eva Marie is going to insert herself into this match. Like, Nia Jax will be playing around with Bailey. Bailey will be trying to fight it out. You know, she'll get a couple hits in here and there. And Nia Jax will just throw her back down again or whatever. And Eva Marie is going to do something. I don't know what exactly, but I think she's going to either. Maybe she's going to, like, get involved in it. Bailey's going to, I don't know, piss. Eva Marie off, and Eva Marie is going to slap Bailey, and she wins by disqualification. Or maybe Nia Jax actually gets pissed off at Eva Marie for trying to hog the spotlight, and something happens, and Bailey gets this weird roll up or whatever. I don't know, but Eva Marie is the X factor, and if she doesn't show up, I can't see a reason why Nia Jax doesn't win the title. And then we'll just kind of have to see where it goes from there, and if it's whether. Uh, if it's a good idea, or if we look back and go, God damn it, you fucked up Bailey's reign. But leave those comments below. If you think any of those suggestions are something good, or you have any other ideas you'd like to see WWE do, you know, play Fantasy Booker, why not? We have one more match to talk about for NXT TakeOver London, so part 8 is going to be for the NXT Championship. <laughs> 